I think everyone knows I'm Brian Parks, the CEO here at JAM, and um, let's start by acknowledging that we're here on Ghana land and pay respects to elders past, present and emerging. And, um, and thank Drew for agreeing to, uh, perhaps reluctantly, emerging artists are not always uh, keen to kind of put themselves out there and, 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 and Drew uh, was a little bit reluctant, but you know, it's actually terrific that he has agreed to speak uh, today and because his show in Gallery 2 at the moment is an absolute corker and um, you know I, I really recommend that you spend some proper time looking at it technically extraordinary but also the visual poetry of the work is, 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 is fantastic Drew and I congratulate you on that and thank you for being our speaker today. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, thanks for having me. Cheers Brian. Um, yeah anyone that knows me knows that I thrive on public speaking, so thanks for the opportunity. Um, <laughs> thanks for coming. Um, I was born in Wyala, which is about a four hour drive from, from Adelaide on the Air Peninsula, um, uh, commonly referred to as Why Bother or Wyami. Um, looks a little bit like this and like this, but don't let that fool you. It also looks like this. Um, steel is, is the main industry in Wyala um, and this pellet plant kind of turns one third of the town red um, with this beautiful red dust uh, which I'm sure is good for everyone. Um, it's also home to the largest breeding ground for giant cuttlefish in the world so if you ever get a chance I recommend checking that out. Winter's the time to do it. Um, this is my dad. He was a, uh, or is, still alive, um, huge influence on me in many ways. Um, but especially, especially musically, I grew up, grew up in a really musical family. Um, my dad's a pretty phenomenal drummer and my mum's a classically trained singer and pianist. Um, and so as a result, this was me from a pretty early age. Um, music was kind, kind of everything to me. Um, constantly listening and playing to music and that was sort of all I wanted to do right up until I finished school. Um, but I guess I wasn't, I wasn't very good at the theory side of things and I couldn't read music so I sort of talked myself out of any formal study um, and I had settled on photography as you can see. Um, this is about the extent of my photography was taking photos of glass I made. Um, once, once I sort of got stuck into glass, that was, that was sort of it for me and I spent sort of every, every minute I could either in the UniSA hot shop or um, waiting, waiting outside of it for a free bench. Um, just with the, with the single pursuit of wanting to improve my skills and be able to make as many things as I could. So um, this is some of my third year work. Uh, where I, I pretty much made the brief fit the work in a lot of ways. Um, I just wanted to verse myself in many different shapes and um, attaching handles and stuff like that. So that's what I did. But I was uh, interested in still life and I was interested in composition. Um, and I found, I found a lot of uh, crossover between playing music and, and blowing glass specifically drumming um, but you know the notion of coordinating lots of things and uh, being on center sort of felt to me like playing in time um, and so it sort of felt natural to me that I would compose um, glass in, in the way that I would a piece of music um, looking for dynamics and you know subtle shifts, overlaps, and uh, and then after uni, uh, I got the chance to come here and be an associate. And um, in first year, I had the opportunity through JAM to go to Pilchuck and study um, under Jeff Mack, who's an American artist who can pretty much make anything. Um, so he makes stuff like this, and he also makes stuff like this and everything in between. Um, and the course I took with him was on Venetian goblet making. So it's this sort of stuff, um, some examples of things he's made. 
Um, and these were a couple that he made during the class. They mounted this beautiful pot of copper blue he sort of used for all the bit work. It's a close up of a fancy Guggenheim stem. Um, I think that piece took him about two hours to make. It's pretty impressive. Um, and this is sort of my best efforts from that show. Uh, show? Uh, class? Whatever. Um, so I wasn't really interested in goblet making before I went to Pilchuck. Sort of actively avoided it, I guess. It was notoriously difficult, but um, sort of opened up a, a whole new world for me in the hot shop. And ever since then, it's been sort of the constant pursuit for the perfect cup. It's pretty washed out there. But you get the gist. Um, and there is no perfect cup, I found out. They've all got a side. So, um, and again, you know, I'm, I'm not interested in making the same shape over and over. I want, I want there to be, um, I want the shapes to interact with each other and the colors to interact with each other and overlap and create negative space and a, a bit more of a dynamic image. Um, these were some that I made not long ago for uh, the Fortified exhibition that Jam had. Um, teamed up with Charlie Bat Black, who's a winemaker. Um, so during my associateship, I kind of uh, started using the bottle as my main so, uh, source of subject matter. Um, and I guess the reason for that was because the bottle was an object that sort of presented itself in many different forms. Um, there was lots of avenues shape-wise that I could go down and that made creating um, a composition, I guess, a little easier for me um, if there's lots of different possibilities. And I, I also liked the idea that the bottle is traditionally a, um, a functional object and taking that utilitarian thing and bringing it into an art space was something that I was interested in and surprisingly confuses a lot of people. Lots of people can't get over the fact that these aren't functional. I guess they can be, but you know, often they ask me what are they used for and I just sort of say, like, looking, I guess. Um, and I started using these solid marble stoppers um, just as a point of bringing in some more colour and highlights on, on the top of the bottles and they also have these pretty sweet optical qualities when you get close sort of draws the, draws the viewer in. Um, so here's just some more examples of that sort of work. These were from a, my last solo show at Worth Gallery in 2019. Um, so after my associateship, I got the opportunity to TA for Dave Walters, um, who's an American-based, Seattle-based artist. Um, he's worked with everyone famous. Um, and he makes some crazy shit. As Baz really liked that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then so a year later, I wrote to him and, and asked if I could work with him again. And, he said, come over and help me teach this class at Pilchuck. So I went and stayed with him in his studio apartment where he's just got all this cool stuff lying around. Um, so his technique is uh, low fire painted on and stippled enamels. Um, and really uh, politically based work, but using these cartoon and fairy tale sort of references. Um, and I learn a lot from Dave just about um, attaching appendages and um, handles and spouts and all that sort of stuff. Obviously puts on all these arms and hats and noses and stuff. Um, so yeah, that really informed some of my newer work. Tom Moore also does that sort of stuff really well. So I guess from those two guys, I picked up a lot of things. It's just a bunch of blanks sitting there ready to be painted. Pretty impressive. Um, and this is Pilchart bit of Pilchuck porn, it's a pretty beautiful place. Um, that's actually smoke. When we were there, there was lots of fire going on and it didn't sort of clear up till the last day when we could actually see there was water out there. Before that, it was just nothing but smoke. Um, here's the class, Dave's the guy 
waving, and D. H. McNabb, the other T. A. is the guy giving the finger next to him. A lovely guy. Um, set of cups I made while I was there with a pretty beautiful backdrop. Pilchuck's a pretty amazing place to be. Um, so yeah, when I got back to Australia, I sort of had had the goal to make my shapes a lot sharper and and push my glass blowing skills. Um, these are some older works, but in the same vein, I wanted to introduce a lot of corners and straight lines, and um, which glass typically doesn't love to do, wants to be round. So I wanted to sort of challenge myself technically, um, and I figured the best way of doing that is to introduce uh, sticking on the neck separately with this Encamo technique, um, which really allowed me to you know, get flat tops on my vessels and sharper corners and the one on the left has been compared to a toilet roll holder on many occasions, um, which maybe is where I got the idea, I'm not sure. I think I do my best thinking on the toilet. So some more examples of where that sort of lead is, is leading. It was also a way for me to I guess I, I'm not interested in, in bringing too much pattern into my work, so a way of bringing in more colour was still keeping it a quite minimal aesthetic. These are some newer ones that are in Gallery 2 at the moment. And these guys were in the Fuse Prize earlier in the year. Um, so, yeah, about a year ago, I was asked if I wanted to um, present an exhibition in Gallery 2. And I kind of went straight to a grant that I wrote um, in lockdown at the start of 2020, and uh, where I sort of fleshed out the bones to a body of work that was sort of really inspired by the Memphis Design Group, um, who have sort of always influenced my practice in, in some way, but I think I wanted to just delve a little deeper and try recreating some of the objects that they had created and, and take a bit more of a heavy influence from, from their aesthetic. Um, it kind of started with this teapot. I think I just really wanted to make a teapot and I, I relate to the way that they take utilitarian objects and make their main purpose um, aesthetics. You know, they, they sort of, it's sort of aesthetics over function for, for most of what they make. And I think that's pretty beautiful, seeing, seeing the beauty in, an, in a mundane object is a, is a nice way of looking at it. Um, and so those guys, uh, specifically Marco Zanini, who designed this guy, and Atore Sotsas, who designed uh, this I think it's the Casablanca bookshelf. Um, worked a lot with Vanini, the Vanini Glass Factory, and a few other glassmakers um, to create some pretty funky stuff. Which is, I think these images are all a little uh, hard to see, but you get the idea. It's like a totem thing. Um, but Atore Sotsas was one of the first guys to sort of start cold gluing glass, I guess, before that was all really, uh, you know, the glass blowers wanted to join it hot and that was the way to do it and uh, it was a bit uh, frowned upon, but, you know, I guess by doing that he was able to get more scale and some more interesting precise shapes. Um, and yeah, again, like that's a functional thing, but like why would you want to put anything in it? It doesn't matter, it's just a cool thing. You can't see half of that thing, but it's a vase, anyway. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I guess I took uh, a lot of inspiration from their bold color palette and their geometric forms and, and the idea of taking these functional things and making them sculptural. Um, like I wouldn't go putting hot tea in that teapot, that would be probably a bad idea. Um, and these are all obviously functional, but that's not necessarily their main purpose. Um, so I started uh, using solid color bar and sort of 
squashing it on the table and cold working it into these little shapes that you see on the top of the on the jars and the teapots and stuff. And um, I guess that was just a way for me to bring in some more playfulness to my work and sort of has that half matte and half shiny sort of cartoon look that I really, really enjoy and I think it gives a lightness to the work. Um, and, you know, I was able to, to make shapes there that I, I couldn't in the hot shop by taking the colour into the cold shop and carving it there and picking it back up again and sticking it on. Um, and yeah, like there's a lot of there's a lot of influence from from Dave there in the attaching the the spouts and the handles and stuff like that. So uh, I guess also the the general theme of composition is throughout throughout the show, right from uni. Um, I think that's about it. Thank you.